what is up squad nation welcome back to no counters no combos and today i'm bringing you my updated armor rush deck i've been play testing this deck since the release of bt8 and uh, i did post a profile earlier on the channel and it was <laughs> so bad um but i did get a couple cards added to it and i worked out some ratios and i did a lot a lot of testing i will say right off the bat this deck has a really good matchup against imperial Dramon. Um, it has a really tough matchup against Black War Greymon, and it has kind of like a 60-40 matchup against Yellow Hybrid in Yellow Hybrid's favor. Like, if you can rush them down early enough, then you're probably in a good state, but if they can pivot and recover, you're probably in for the long game, but it's not essentially a lose-lose matchup for you. It's kind of more 60-40 in Yellow Hybrid's favor. Those are just some of the more popular decks I've been testing against. Um, X Antibody, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't gotten enough testing against that. But for the most part, Imperial Dramon is definitely a plus matchup. Black War Greymon, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with Black War Greymon himself because he is a huge problem for the deck. And um, Yellow Hybrid's pretty decent. So without further ado, let's get into the babies. I'm just running four of the Jamming Vmon, Jamming Demi Vmon, for consistency's sake. Um, you don't always need to crack an egg every turn, uh, but he does give you some nice uh drawing with your vmon that you'll go up into normally when you digivolve and raising um you can make the argument for upamon obviously upamon is a really good card i do prefer the jamming because i'm guaranteed to draw if i have a jamming on it upamon sometimes will not draw you cards especially if there's evolution sources in play so he's not always the best against yellow hybrid uh but for the most part there's a lot of cards being played out you know, turn one or the early stages that don't have evolution sources. So Upamon is definitely a safe choice. Um, I'd rather just have Demi Vimon for the access to that jamming. Um, and you don't need more than four eggs in my opinion, because you're, like I said, you're not cracking every turn. And usually by the time you finish your fourth egg, you should be either winning or losing at that point. So you don't really need to play five eggs in my opinion, just to maximize consistency. Um, for our rookies, we're playing 16 rookies in total. We're playing four of our main rookie here, which is our jamming Vimon. This guy is just really good, gets you a free swing, gets you a draw, and then he works really well in combination with the armor purge mechanic, uh, which we'll go over, you know, with the combination of fire rocket and stuff like that. Um, I like this guy. It's a free check. You can get rid of a lot of big guys. You know, a lot of the times I've been checking like Mastamons and um, uh, just big DP Digimon and just not having to worry about it. You know, Imperials, uh, Fighter Mode, Dragon Mode, stuff like that. So that jamming Vmon is definitely... Um, your main rookie that you want to see to digivolve over Demi V. Uh, we're playing three of the starter deck searchers. Uh, this guy has like 29 targets in the deck when you look at top three. So he's your best searcher. And then in combination, we are playing three of the BT8 searchers. He has like 17 targets or 19 targets in deck. Um, and uh, the good thing about him is that he doesn't only search you with Digimon. He can search you a multicolor card so you can get your tamers and get your options uh, preferably i'd like to go with the starter deck first just to get my pieces because you do want to see your armors um this guy can whiff sometimes and since he's digging you that extra card deep you know from three to four you are putting a whole bunch of power and a bunch of gas at the bottom of your deck and you're not going to be able to you know really see it that well often later on in the game so we're playing six of the searchers just move that to the side um, I am playing three of the DX1 Vmons. This guy is just really good in combination with Magnamon because not only does he un uh, unsuspend and give you a memory when he unsuspends, but with, with Magnamon digivolving over Vmon for three on the unsuspend with the trigger on Magnamon himself, it does cost two memory essentially because you're unsuspending as an inheritable and gaining that memory. So it makes Rapidmon, uh, I'm sorry, it makes Magnamon a two digivolution cost with this Vmon. Um, there are a couple other deck, uh, other cards in the deck that do restand, which I'll get to later on. It's kind of a tech choice of mine. Um, and of course, in combination with armor texture, it is, a, it is a good card to have for the inheritable. So we're playing three of the X Vmon, for the EX1 Vmons. And then our final Vmon, we're playing starter deck, uh, the all four starter deck Vmons. Um, I like this guy early because it helps you draw and sustain early on. Uh, your main Digivolution targets on your stack in Raising is gonna be either Jammy Vmon or this guy, because when you promote, right away he's gonna draw you an extra card. Uh, and that is in good combination with the um, with the um, the Purge mechanic, because his Inheritable is not once per turn. So if you go ahead and swing with an Armor, you draw a card, 
it gets cracked or what or whatnot. You could digivolve again with armor texture or your unsuspend with your tamer to draw to, to attack and draw again. So it's just nice because you want to snowball and you want to get to your pieces as quickly as possible because you have to maintain advantage, especially with the other speedy decks in the format, like Imperial. So that's what kind of helps you in that matchup. Um, otherwise, um, he is just, you know, a good um, evolutionary target. You're not going to use his actual effect because you're not playing old force in this list but i have seen some other tech profiles on youtube that include old force at like a one or two of just to get that warp digivolution effect off uh next we're going to go into our armors we're playing for Raidramon. Uh, i do not call this guy lydramon this is Raidramon. he's your blue green source this guy is really important in the imperial Dramon matchup because it helps um suspend their digimon that you could just run over because xvmon and stingmon are only 4k so you can run over this guy being a 5k armor texture is a pretty busted keyword in my opinion uh, so just having um, having the ability to go into this guy and get rid of problem cards is really nice. You can also digivolve and keep him in raising, uh, so you can go ahead and mitigate your memory gain with your tamers when you have them out and about. Um, in combination, obviously, of course, we're playing four of the Flame Dramon. Oops, sorry about that. That's not Flame Dramon. Here he is. <laughs> four of the Flame Dramon. Uh, this is your best offensive armor because he gets that 3k DP boost. Uh, when he attacks um, which is going to get you over a lot of different checks in combination with fire rocket is really nice too because you can check multiple times and then if you get cracked on the second check you can just armor purge and then you can um, go into a magnamon and be safe for defense and you'll have that extra dp boost uh, by having an armor in the grave or you can just go ahead and punch offensively with this guy the dp boost does carry over into your sources so if you were to crack um, armor purge on a on a security check and go into Magnamon, the Magnamon would get the 2k DP boost from having him in the trash, as well as the 3k DP boost from having him attack. The 3k would only be to the end of the turn, but Magnamon's effect obviously clears until your opponent's turn, so it just makes it a nice, versatile card. They all digivolve over Vmon for two, which is really nice, and these just basically give you the aggression that you need to kind of clear your opponent as early as possible. And then the boss monster of the deck, of course, is for Magnamon. This guy is so important. Uh, in the Imperial Dramon matchup, they can't get over this guy if he has an armor and trash, especially with the Pyodramon being an 8k. Normally, they're not going to swing into him, but even if you don't get the boost off of the armor and trash, it still gives them a body that they have to go over, so they, they really can't OTK you with the unsuspension of uh, Pyodramon. Magnamon just comes up really clutch in the Imperial Dramon matchup, so that's what kind of helps you... Um, navigate through that and offensively he's also a really big monster um if you have enough armors in your in your trash that so you can just swing over your opponent's board and get rid of their big megas and stuff like that so that's that's pretty much it for the armors there's 12 in total uh, obviously we're going to get more um with bt9 um but i didn't consider using any of the halsamons or the digmons or the samarimons i just want to keep them uh those 12 armors because they do digivolve over vmon for a uh, less expensive cost and this is my tech choice for the deck uh, we're playing two of the ex uh, the x vmons here um from bt3 i like this guy because basically what happens with him is i'm only playing two of so if i get him great if not i'm not worried about it he digivolves for two which is nice but when he digivolves you can choose one you can unsuspend one of your level four digimons including himself so for example like if i go and crack with armor purge uh, and my Vmon is just kind of sitting there. I can digivolve on top of a Vmon, and if I have the EX1 Vmon, I unsuspend and get a memory, so this all essentially only costs one, or I can go ahead and just continue my aggression that way. There is a really neat combo with um, Fire Rocket, where if you give Fire Rocket to your Flame Dramon, you check them twice. Let's say you get deleted on the second check, you go down into Armor Purge. The Vmon carries over that that 3000 DP, so the Vmon will be sitting at 5k. Then you can go ahead and Digivolve for two on Suspend, and he'll carry over that 3k DP boost uh, to be another 7k swing. So it's just really nice to get more swings. It kind of reminds me of a hybrid, like a, like a watered down version of a hybrid, uh, because a lot of the times your opponent is not going to expect this. And it's kind of like a cheap man's like armor, uh, armor texture, because essentially what armor texture does is it just allows you to tag out. But this guy essentially does the same thing because he's going to digivolve over a Vmon on suspend and give you another swing. So I really like how he's been working and testing. Um, I was considering playing him at three, but two seems to be the right number. And then, of course, we're playing our last champion. We're playing the Lobomon here. You know, two, uh, two, two memory to digivolve over a Tamer is just nice. You do play a good amount of Tamers in this, so, you know, Lobomon for game is, is really good. It is a level four, which is pretty important. I'll get to it with the next card I'm talking about. 
because if you have multiples, uh, multiple level fours out, you can just kind of continue with your plays. But I do like the one level mon. And then our our last Digimon is um, we're playing two Chimera mon. Like I said before, with the Lobo mons, if you have a Lobo mon and an XV mon out, which is a possible turn that you can have, you can go ahead and, and uh, DNA Digivolve into Chimera mon for free, and then just kind of feed him a source from the trash. Uh, the most efficient play, or like the, the best play you want, is just to make sure that you feed a a uh, you you DNA with a, a Rage mon. And a flame drum on, so you can have multiple colors and then feed him a magnum on if you have him in trash. That way he can get the four colors and swing for 12k. But he is really nice. The DP reduction does come in play. It's just another swing for free uh, if you want to clear out games or whatnot. I was playing him at one, but I ran the risk of getting him in security a lot of the time, so I upped him to two. And two seems to be like the best number for it right now. Chimeramon is a pretty versatile card. He's been seen in a lot of decks in the BT8 format. Um, and I just really like him. I was experimenting with Sh Shakakumon, or Shakumon rather, um, but that requirement of being a blue and a yellow is kind of less convenient as opposed to this is just any color, you just need two level fours. So worst case scenario, if I need to DNA over a Lobomon and an XVmon, I can do that for an extra swing. Uh, so that rounds out the Digimon onto the Tamers. I am playing two TKs, okay? I don't have access to Davis, so I'm not playing Davis. I know he's getting reprinted, so obviously, the deck will get updated when the reprints come out. TK, however, is not bad. He's a memory setter to three, and if your blue Digimon gets attacked, you can suspend a draw card. So most of the time, if your opponent wants to fight for board, they're gonna have to attack your Digimon anyway. 90% of the deck is blue Digimon, or like actually like 99% of the deck is blue Digimon, so this just gives you a free draw for suspension. And then with the armored purge mechanic, if they can't clear your Vmon, then you have another way of attacking next turn and armor and Digivolving. Uh, with an armor on the next turn so i do like tk um obviously davis is a lot better because it does search you cards but i think tk is a pretty uh decent budget alternative and then we're playing three uh davis and kens uh this is the most important tamer in my opinion in the deck because it gives you that additional memory if you're lucky enough to have a ragermon or yeah ragermon and raising and then promote him in your raising phase this will trigger both effects so you'll get two memory essentially one for having a blue, one for having a green. And starting off with five memory in this deck is a ton. This deck is very memory efficient. If you check multiples of these, you know, every turn, whether it's just a blue Digimon on board, you're still gonna be getting whatever the total is and you could just kind of snowball and spiral out of control. I really wanted to try and find room for a fourth one, but I just feel like it's it, the deck is just too tight. It's crazy. It sounds crazy, but I don't. <laughs> Fifty cards is just not enough in my opinion. But I digress. Uh, I think three is a good number. I don't have trouble seeing it. I can search it with the Vmon, so it does come up uh, very often. It's just very crucial when you play this. You don't want to give your opponent too much memory, like an Imperial matchup. You want to try to play this as early as possible because you don't want to give them too much memory because they only need three memory to just kind of kill you because the Stingmon costs three. So if they have their own memory set tamer and they can just have an XVmon on board promoting from raising, just go into Stingmon and then every other play off that is free. They'll most likely draw into the uh, hidden potential and then just kind of poop on you from there. So I do like three. You can make the argument for four. I don't think either number is wrong, but for space reasons, this is where I'm at right now. So those are our tamers. And we are really, we're kind of option heavy in this deck, um, but the options are just really good. Uh, your best option in the deck is Fire Rocket. This gives you the ability to check multiple times and there's a lot of nifty combos with Armor Purge being a mechanic and just kind of shifting down to your Vmons checking again. Uh, the best way to do it is, you know, Fire Rocket on a Flame Drummond swing, get that initial check. If you have to purge him out, you get your Vmon swinging for jamming so he doesn't get cracked. And then you can go ahead and digivolve into your X Vmon to give you another swing. Or you can go ahead and go up into an armor and unsuspend it with Davis Ken. There's just a lot of different versatility that you could do. His security effect of deleting a blocker is not the greatest. It probably will come up the most in a Black World Greymon matchup, just deleting their six drop or their um, their Mega. Because if he has the inheritable off the Black Greymon giving him blocker, this does check really well. But other than that, I haven't really seen it come through. This is just a really good card to push that aggression as much as possible. You can easily check three to four cards in one turn, and then your opponent just kind of has to recover with very little to no memory. So Fire Rocket at three. Uh, you can make the armor for four. I just think three is enough because four might be overkill. Essentially, that's you're checking for eight cards, and there's only five mem uh, five security. So I'm playing four Hammer Sparks. So I have debated so much between four Hammer Sparks or three hammer sparks and an ice wall or two hammer sparks 
I think four is the best number because I want to see this card as much as possible. Gaining a memory just to extend your plays is really nice. Checking it off security, off security for two memory sometimes just ends your opponent's turn. So playing multiples of this will help you get that extension, especially in a deck that's pretty memory efficient. You don't have to worry too much about overextending yourself and passing turn to your opponent with a lot of memory. Most of the time, your opponent's gonna have a memory to set tamer anyway, so you wanna make sure that you can extend and do as much as you can on your turn before like passing over with a Magnum on up, up for a blocker or something like that. So I do like four hammer sparks. It's free gain in memory. I mean, it's just a really good card in my opinion. Um, I'm playing two blue memory boosts. Uh, this card is interesting. I kind of treat it as like my 17th and 18th rookie. Um, for the most part, this does dig you four cards for a blue Digimon, but then it does give you that two memory off of delay, which is really nice. Um, so in tandem with your Hammer Sparks and your Davis Cans and your TKs, there's a possibility of you getting a lot of memory in the turn. I think the most memory I've had in one turn was like seven or eight uh, with with like blue memory boosts and tambors and stuff like that. And that's just an obscene amount of memory in this deck. Um, I do like the ability to search for a piece that you might need. Um, I don't prioritize these over my Vmons though. Like if I open with a memory boost and a Vmon, I'm still gonna prioritize the Vmon because it's still giving you a rookie on board so you can go ahead and armor up or digivolve up depending on how you wanna do it. But this is a pretty good fail safe in my opinion and checking it off security is not bad because it's gonna give you that extra two memory at a certain point. And then the 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 only like removal card we're playing is Megadeth. Megadeth is kind of tricky because you need to have a Davis Ken on board or a Ragermon to resolve this card if you want to hard cast it from your hand. I just hope that I check it in security, but it is kind of a necessary evil. This deck doesn't have a lot of removal tools aside from just aggression and running over your opponent's Digimon. So Megadeth does really come in handy, especially if your opponent has multiple attackers you can suspend one and then you can bounce the one that's currently attacking so you're just avoiding two swings really um or you're avoiding another attack or a check and this can just kind of get rid of problematic cards if they have like their mega out and it's, in, it's suspended you can just kind of play this for five it's not that hefty of a cost and just get rid of them and have them try to recover and sometimes late game it is hard for them to build back up especially if they're trying to go up a regular chain you know from three to four to five to six and so on and so forth you kind of have the the advantage aggressively because you're only really topping out at, at an ultimate level Digimon. But for the most part, your your damage doers are champion level Digimon. So you can pivot and recover off of uh, five memory on a Mega Death. And then my last extra card or option is Armor Texture. I want this card to be so good. Like I love the idea of Armor Texture. I love the... Um, the notion of being able to tag into and out of armors but for some reason it just doesn't perform the way i want it to like essentially the reason i kept it at one is because essentially what this does is it gives me a, a final swing for turn like if i if i go and i check twice if my opponent has two security and i check twice with a with a flame Dramon and, and a fire rocket and i don't essentially kill them I can armor texture pay the memory go into another armor and swing for game uh, so it's essentially like similar to how I would finish a game with a with a hybrid um but there's just something about this card that I don't like as much as a hybrid or the XV Mon package or the Davison Ken it has the same gimmick as the Davison Ken basically playing another armor by paying its memory cost and unsuspending it but I would almost rather have this card act in a way where you tag out for free, but then at the end of the turn, your armor dies. Sometimes you don't have that two memory or that three memory to tag out because you're you're doing so much like aggressively with your memory. This being like your last play, sometimes you don't have that memory and armor texture will just pass your opponent, uh, pass to your opponent. This is great with, um, with Magnemon if you wanna do that. Like if you go ahead and you swing for your security checks and all that and you're kind of done and you do this and you finish on a Magnemon, totally fine because Magnemon's automatically gonna get that that DP boost from having an armor in the trash. But as a finisher, like I don't like it as much. So I I, I only play this when I have to. Uh, if, if I'm either going for game or I wanna pass turn and have a blocker on board, security checking it is great. It has a really good um, security ability where if it's checked, um, you can play a, a Vmon, essentially, a 
You can play a Digimon with three in its traits from your trash or hand um, that's level three. So essentially you play a Vmon and then you can play your Vmons that, that dig for certain cards. That's really nice, but it doesn't it doesn't warrant the trade-off of me playing multiples of this because this isn't a card that I'm trying to resolve as much as possible. I could be totally wrong. I know there are lists that play like three to four of these, which is great. If you're having success with it, awesome. But just the way I've built this and the way I've tested it and the way I've played it, armor texture just does not come into play as much as I'd like it to. Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, I think armor, uh, armor Rush is pretty good uh, right now. Obviously, I'm a newer player, but I've been having a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I've been enjoying the, the, the testing and everything like that. I think... I think armor text or armor purge decks are probably just one piece away from being really, really good. I know that there's they're getting another um, Magnamon antibody in BT9, so that might put it over the top. But I really do like the um, efficiency of the memory. I really do like playing multiple Digimon out for a low cost. I really like being able to attack multiple times. You do have to be careful with decks that can put big stacks on the board and kind of control you which is why it's such a tough uh, Black War Greymon matchup, but for the most part, I really do enjoy playing this deck as my first venture into the Digimon trading card game. So let me know what you guys, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and please hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything, no counters, no combos. We really do appreciate the support, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Be there, or be squared.